I'm going to say it again. The fire of God is coming down. It's called the glory of God. It's seven times hotter than any fire we know. And it's going to purge. People are going to die. The glory of God is a one. It's such a marvelous thing. But the glory of God, if you're not right with God and you ask for the glory of God to come down on you, it can kill you. Because it is pure and holy. It is the Holy Spirit and fire. And it's seven times hotter. If you take a look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's we're going to go back to that for a minute here. We've got to recognize that when they looked in there after, after the strong men were killed, by the way, that the strong men, if you take, it's like a spider web, right? Okay. A spider web is always connected places, right? Before the, the web is spun. Those are called strongholds. Okay. A spider in the, in the webbing represents a Jezebel and Baal spirits. Okay? Also known as Ahab and Jezebel. Mm -hmm. And they always want to destroy the vineyard. But they wanted the vineyard keeper first. Because the vineyard keeper always keeps the people in spirit and truth. They're led of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. And fire will come out of their mouth because it's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking through the Holy Spirit in them. And it's a two-edged fiery sword. And it's been done away with in the church as a whole. As a whole. That's why one person, Naboth, was tending to the vineyard or God's people. Okay? God has raised up a whole army of Naboths. And the words that are about to come out are going to cut people to the heart. And I'm grateful for it. Because the heart needs to be circumcised again. Because we've had our ears scratched so long that we love it and we grew comfortable with it. And we forgot what the real Word of God says, which is Jesus Christ Himself. And He sits in the throne of glory, holy fire. Now, when you take a look, everybody knows the Scripture, 2 Corinthians 7, 14, which I will read in a minute. But I hear, and I have never heard anybody ever preach or talk about what preceded that. There was a conversation going on with God and Israel. The house was built by Solomon. They were ready to dedicate it. In that process, I mean, by reading it in chapter 6 and stuff, and, and, and in 7, you see that Solomon gave great sacrifices, 22,000 bulls, or oxen, whatever you want to call them, and 120,000 sheep, plus other stuff. So much so that they dug a hole. Have you ever noticed when you, when, when you build a fire on land, it digs a hole? You ever notice that? A hot fire will dig a hole in the ground. Okay? And so, this is a hot fire. And it's a dedication. And the fire of God came down. How many times in the Bible has the fire of God came down and consumed something? Twice. Elijah. Elijah. Elijah twice. So I don't know. I'm asking you guys. I'm not going to sit here and tell you. I know. I know. But it's something I'm going to search out now. But in, in 2 Chronicles 6 and 7, the fire of God came down in the dedication. And the people saw this. And it put them on their face. People have no fear of the Lord mm -hmm. yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. Very true. When God moves, we should all Excuse the phrase, shut up. The music should stop. When there's a word of God in the church or any happening anywhere, 
everything should stop. Uh, there was a commercial on TV. I don't know if it's still there. I don't watch TV anymore. So um, <coughs> there used to be a TV on there. Or was, was it Merrill Lynch? Yeah. And somebody was talking. No, they said the name Mer when huh? he yeah. speaks. It was Merrill Lynch, right? Well, anyhow, it was, it was about some finance. And everybody around these two sh just shut up and all looked. Yeah. That's how we be, should be toward God. Yes. And then somebody says, the Lord. In any fashion. In fact, that should be the first thing out of our mouths. Jesus said, whatever's in your heart should come out as a treasure. Right? Whatever the treasure in your heart is. Why don't we talk about Jesus first before anything else? Why is the name of the Lord involved in the first breath we give back to God? Which is Isaiah 55, 11. My words cannot come back void, but they must go forth to prosper that for which I sent them. That's the Father talking. Now I know. But he says, my words. Who is the word? Jesus. He sent Jesus. It was the breath of God to us to give us Life and life abundantly. In his Son, through his blood, and the Holy Spirit, which Jesus breathed upon, sealed us, and then filled us. He didn't fill us and then seal us. He breathed on us, said, receive you the Holy Spirit, and filled us. That is your authority. You need no authority anywhere else on this earth. Because now you have the authority of the thrones of the King of Glory. That's why he breathed on us. He is our covering. You need no other covering. None. Even Ephesians 5 is about Jesus being the head of the family. Okay? There's so much spiritual things in the Word of God that people twist because they're looking at it physically or emotionally. God have mercy. Never get your emotions involved in the Word of God, even though He's an emotional God, and He is. We're creating His image. But be careful when you get emotional because you can twist the Word of God very easily. Because we're so used to it. This world is so used in the church to having their ears scratched. Yep. Go read 2 Timothy, all of it. Yeah. It's either at the end of verse uh, chapter 2 or chapter 3 that says that the devil moves in the mouth as he wills. Excuse me. The only way the devil can have his will is if we give it to him. I've never heard anybody ever preach on that. It's right there in the King James. As he wills. He moves people about. They're puppets. And how does he do this? <clears throat> by the emotional trauma that's caused demonically in our lives. Sometimes starting in the womb. Sometimes even before the womb. we got to recognize that the emotions are used by the devil and they are caught in between the physical and the spiritual. It's called emotional trauma or broken heartedness. And Jesus said, I came to, to bind up the broken heartedness. To bind up means to take care of the devils behind it because where you have broken heartedness, you will have a spirit involved. Yeah. This is what Legion was about. Legion was so traumatized by spirits that he was nothing but a possessed emotional wreck. Yeah. That's why even chains and fetters could not hold him. He broke them. And that was to put fear on man which means everybody, men, women, children. Fear the devil. No, don't fear the devil. Let the devil fear you because of who lives in you. He's already defeated. We've got to remind him. That's why these feet are Jesus' feet. And he bruised the devil's head under oh, his feet. boy. And he actually believed that he could take control of heaven. He never saw himself... Above God. It's a lie. I've heard it pretty, it's, it's not true. If you go look at Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, just remember 14 28, you'll get a good picture of who Satan was and what happened, okay? And what's going to happen, okay? Jesus, to show his authority over the devil, besides the devil knowing that he had to submit, and the Lord Jesus Christ held him there. He's under our feet.
because Jesus is in us. Our feet are the feet of Jesus. Keep him under your feet. When he comes out, put him back. Okay? And so, uh, to show his authority again to the whole world over the devil, who will rule and reign in the end? Remember that. Okay? In the book of Revelation, he will rule and reign at the end. But, when Jesus comes back, he's not going to do anything to the devil. He's going to order it to be done. To show his authority. That he's the king. He's also known as the Lord of hosts. The word host or stars are angels. Okay? And and so the fallen angels, they came against God, but there are more for us than against us. <coughs> okay? And so we cannot fear them, even if you have it doesn't matter. You can don't fear it. God's in control. I mean go look at second second uh <laughs> Second Corinthians, okay, Thank you. where it's just, I think it's chapter twelve. Anyhow, it's it's where Paul gets the spirit, and literally says, "A messenger of Satan." Well, that's no holy angel, okay, and it enters Paul, okay, because it says he had a thorn in his flesh, okay. Now I can't find scripture anywhere in the Bible that says it ever left him. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it did and was allowed to enter the flesh. Could not touch his soul, could not touch his spirit, but it was in the flesh itself. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now we live in fleshly bodies, things happen. Even our thoughts can open the door. Don't fear that. Just look to God, ask repent and ask him to deliver you of it. Okay? It's it's actually it's no big deal. The churches, the churches was made a big deal, and most of them that makes it a big deal are religious people. And they need to repent because they're judging. Yeah. Okay? They're legalists. Most of them are legalists. Yeah. And it's like God showed me you know, in John, at the end of John there, that, that he proclaims. He said, if we were to write about, uh, if we were to record all the things that Jesus did. Now, he's talking three and a half years here. Just three and a half years. If we were to record or write about all the things that Jesus did, I would... I, he said the world couldn't contain the books that should be written. Do you know what a statement that is? And yet we keep him into one book. Come on, open the book up. You, you saw me standing up here like this, with my hands on the Word. I wasn't putting my hands on top of this print. I put my hands on Jesus at his throne. He's the living word. He shows me what's in here. The Father shows me, and the Holy Spirit shows me what's in here. I let them do that. Because that's called the school of the Spirit. When you're going through things, it's called the school of extreme obedience. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the sower of the seed, 30. You're saved. That's the blood. You're saved. God gave you belief so you could believe and receive. 60. Is the Holy Spirit, the breath of God being given to us, which is the second promise of the Father in Acts 1, that, that we receive the Holy Spirit through His Son, Jesus Christ, who was the first promise, Galatians 2. So when we take a look at these things, that, that learning to serve, we're priests of the Lord Jesus Christ. We learn to serve. Okay? It's not fun. You know why? Because we have to humble ourselves. Oh, God, have mercy. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, I'm out of here. No, but it, 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 there's a lot of people like this. I'm serious. Because they got so much knowledge that they think they don't need to humble themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I've run into this. Mm -hmm. Believe me, I've run into it everywhere. I, I won't get into endless debates with people over this stuff. I won't. I'm going to speak what God gives me. If they want to fight about it, let them. I don't care. And it's happened. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, then the, the, the hundredfold is kingship. You're enthroned with Jesus Christ, or you're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's Ephesians, okay? Not everybody sits there. I don't care what they teach. It does not say that in the Bible. It is a position in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the fourth position of the sower of the seed, there's only four. The fourth position, there are positions in that position. And if you ever ask God... Ask him to show you the kingdom of heaven. You got the throne of God, then there's layers outwardly where the light is and his love. 
Then there's outer darkness, which is the worst place you could be. Mm -hmm. There's no light. You cannot feel God. You cannot feel love. And by the way, we were created to feel the love of God and be mm -hmm. part of Him. Amen. Okay? Not, not, not that He has to have us know. He wanted us to be part of Him. That's why He sent His Son. Mm -hmm. And that's why He gave me His breath. He gave us His breath. Okay? And then that sealed us with the authority of the kingdom of heaven and of God. Okay? And in that process, you get grace through the blood. You can only have grace through the blood of Jesus Christ as a covenant. It must be a covenant. It must be a confession from your heart, as in, in uh, Romans 10. Whosoever confesses from their heart, Jesus is Lord, shall be saved. The word in the King James, shall, means you will. Should means you could. Okay? Just like in uh, John 3, 16. Okay? Jesus came to save the world. Okay? That all should be saved. It's our choice. Okay? So now you know, in, that's why I like the King James. It's very clear what they mean. It's very clear what it means in on and in. Like the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done in, in earth. We're earth. That's what keeps us from being a, a whited sepulcher, which means full of dead men's bones. They look good outside, but inside they're full of death. Okay? That's why Jesus rebuked them so much, because they, they, they were whited sepulchers. They were religious. Okay? They were so wrapped up in the law that the law was their God. Did you hear that? Yeah. They were so wrapped up in the law and using it to judge and get that preeminence that they became God. That was their law. And they judged. That's why Jesus spoke about don't judge. There's only one judge. That's him. And we've got to understand something very clear here that Grace grants us time to change and not be condemned. The Lord didn't come to condemn the world, but to save us. That all should be saved. So we got to recognize we become our own judges. Which if I remember right, uh, it's in Corinthians, talked about judging yourself. But anyhow, Paul, Paul was talking. If you're going to judge yourself, judge a righteous judgment according to what he sees, not you. Right, right, right. Again, back to the image thing. Okay, The devil wants us not to receive by causing us or causing us to believe we're not worthy. And this is where the three strand unholy cord of shame, guilt, and condemnation comes in. Mm -hmm. And it's usually attached to history, which affects you in the present. Jesus came to change. He can't change history. But he can cover it and change all the effects and influences of it, which makes us the way we are today. Mm. Okay? And now when you give Jesus time to come in and change these things, as we change, mm. we move into the for he is to come. He is our future. Okay? That's why he was and is and is to come. History, effects and influences, the where we're going. Okay? He is our image. Because he created us in his image. And we are to be the mirrors on this earth of who he really is. Not this tainted, watered-down, figurehead image of God. But it's also not the image of the Father that used to be taught. Fire and brimstone. Well, fire and brimstone sometimes is necessary. But we need to recognize God is not going to stand up there and, and just stand there waiting for you to make a mistake and hit you with lightning. That's not our God. That's why we have the blood covenant, so we have grace, because God loves us so much that he did send his only begotten son that we could and should and shall be saved. It's a process. 30, 60, 100. Belief is from the Father. Faith is from the Son. Trust is through the Holy Spirit. It's not just given. It's learned and earned. Same with humility. It's not just given. You walk it out. Every day we are dying to ourselves. Till we get to a place like Paul says, no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. So they don't see you. They see Jesus. They don't hear you. They hear Jesus. 
They don't feel you, they feel the presence of God. This is who we're supposed to be. And um, I'm going to read 2 Chronicles 7.14 because I, I believe it's very powerful for right now. In fact, I'm going to start at 12 because it's more than just verse 14. Most people never take the time to look at the scriptures before or after. Okay? So, Jeremiah 29, 11 is a good, ex a good excuse. But you got to add three more to that. you got to go Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. Mm -hmm. Because it's conditional. Amen. Yeah. He tells us what he <coughs> thinks and feels about us, but the process of the blessing is in what comes after that. Mm -hmm. Just like salvation is a gift. But the walking out of salvation is your choices and decisions being made, which will actually becomes your judgment. When you stand before the throne of God, before Jesus Christ, He doesn't judge us; we do. God gets a bad rap. Come on, He didn't make you do what you did. Amen. Yeah, He's God. He could have changed. He could have stopped that. He could. He could. No, He couldn't because He gave us free will. That can't be preached enough. But what we choose and decide, that's why there's a book of remembrance. We've got to understand, everybody has a chapter in the book of remembrance. Everybody. And it's not just about the good things you did. It's about the, the, the bad things that you gave to God that He could take them and change you. That's in the book of remembrance too. Because you trusted God. You believed you live by the faith of the Son of God, which is Galatians 2.20. Don't live by what faith you think you have. You're in trouble. Okay? You'll never stand if you walk by your faith. Don't walk by your faith. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I die not. But the life I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who died and gave his life for me. Because he loved me. I'm adding to it a little bit at the end there. But that's what it boils down to. We've got to live by the faith of the Son of God. How much faith did he have? <laughs> no boundaries. Faith in the Word of God, study it out for yourself. If you don't believe it, faith represents the Holy Spirit. And what measure the Holy Spirit you give will be the measure of faith that's released to you. Remember that. If you want to walk by the faith of the Son of God, then you've got to die yourself so he can live in you and through you. Now you've got his faith. Unmeasurable. Because in John 3, 32, he had the Holy Spirit without measure. measure. Did you catch that? What does measure mean? Limit. Seeing where you're at. Choice and decisions. Okay? Seeing how much you really trust God. <laughs> so remember that. The measure of faith you have is according to the measure of obedience you give to the Holy Spirit. To live in you and run your life for Jesus. Not you, for Jesus. We were created to glorify the Son of God and get home. And take as many with us as we can. The devil's out to do the same thing. He's out to take as many as he can straight to hell. And God is raising us up to put a stop to that. By choice and decision. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to my, myself for a house of sacrifice. Now, in this, 12, by the way, is the number of divine order. Now, I'm going to turn these verses into spirit for you because that's how I've been raised. I served the King of Glory from the minute I got saved. I received Jesus Christ, my Lord, Savior, God, and best friend. And from that moment on, He began to teach me from His throne to serve Him as the King of Glory. So, in that process, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit has taught me to look at the Word of God in spirit. And the significance of the spirit and spiritual things and what's really being said. 
So the Bibles that are being put out, they're being put out, and please don't be offended at this. I'm simply going to say what I know for a fact. They're scratching itching ears because people don't have the Holy Spirit enough and not given enough place for the Holy Spirit to teach us. Okay? We're going from place to place. Now, it's okay. Don't get me wrong in this. But I'm just telling you, there's going to come a time where God's going to shut you down. You're not going to be able to go anywhere, and you're going to have to sit with Him like Mary. Okay, the church is nothing but filled with Marthas. Going all over the place. When you should be sitting like a Mary at, at home or wherever God's got you so he can teach you himself. Okay, that's the key. In that key, when you're sitting with Jesus in his presence, you have so much peace that now you are no longer a threat because he has covered you in his presence. And by covered in his presence... God, you don't have to speak. You don't have to move. You don't have to get up when somebody comes and says, Hey, come on, I need your help. No, you just sit. Amen. Okay? And there's no, the devil can't put guilt, shame, or condemnation on you because you're not helping because God told you to sit. Amen. And believe me, it is a hard test to endure repeatedly. Believe me, I know from experience. Yeah. The hardest thing I ever had to do is obey God when I didn't want to. And the reason I didn't want to is because I thought of other people. But I also genuinely wanted to help. And God says you can't. Which means he has a plan of what's going on. And you've got to trust God in that plan. You can't just jump in and help somebody. You must look at the Lord and say, Lord, what is your will? What do you want? Every action should be taken before the Lord to find out what he wants. Before you move. That's the key in Mary. Martha was busy. And tried to get Mary out of position. To lose her blessings. Mm -hmm. Jesus rose up. And he spoke. Mary never moved. Never flinched. No. She sat right there. She was at absolute peace. She was in the exact perfect place. And position in the Lord. At that moment. And that's why Jesus spoke to, to Martha. It is a spirit. Okay? It is a spirit to steal, kill, and destroy your blessings and accuse you of disobedience because you didn't ask God first what he wanted. That's what he expects from us, to give such place to the Holy Spirit that we have a thousand-fold blessing, not 30, 60, or 100. See, the 60 or the 100 is us enthroned with Jesus. And he teaches us how to rule and reign with him. The thousand is the communion of the Godhead to us. And the Father is the one who calls that forth. Which is right out of Revelation 3, verse 18, 20, 21, 12. And then the end result of that is Colossians 2, 9. Do you not know that you have the fullness of the Godhead in you Bodily. That's when you get to a place that you can be translated and other things. And that's a place where you can sit in the presence of God and nothing can move you but God. Nothing. God has taught Sean and I both this. We do our best to live in it. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. But praise God we can repent and be restored. The devil's always trying to get us to do something. The devil's always trying to steal, kill, and destroy anything they can to stop us. Well, they can't stop us because we're in the hands of the Lord and we obey him and no one and nothing else. And don't be offended at that. We're all supposed to be there. Jesus should be number one. If he's your Lord and your God, your Savior, your King, and your best friend, is he not the first thing you should look at? And yet we don't. I love my wife. But I love Jesus more. I have to in order to love her the way he wants me to. Yeah. Okay? That is, that, by the way, that's Ephesians 5. Yeah. When Jesus is my head, that's his wife. Not mine. But she was given to me as a gift. And vice versa. And we're learning how to live together. In one accord with the Lord first. I expect her to put God before me. If she doesn't, I'll let her know. She does the same with me. And that is called love. 
and divine order. I always like looking at the number 12 because it's a one, the Father, and the two, the Son. And they're one. And the Holy Spirit proves it. So if you take... I, 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 we want to try and be out of here by 1 o'clock. So I'm, that's why I keep looking at the clock. I usually don't care about the clock. But I made a covenant and I'm going to keep it. So the process by which God wants us to do things, you have got to keep. When he asks you to do something and you commit to that, you do it. Because if you don't, you're in disobedience. And that's sin. To do good and not do it is sin. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So in the process of this verse, we've got to understand that verse is about us in the Spirit. But it's Old Testament. Yeah, I know. The whole Old Testament is about Jesus Christ, is it not? Right. Is it not? Right? Yeah. It's about being made in the image of God, right? Mm -hmm. Being the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, it's not just the temple of the Holy Spirit. He just prepares the way for the Father and Son to move in permanently. We know that from John uh, 14, verse 23. That they will make their permanent abode in us. Okay? That word abode means to it's a dwelling place. We are the temple of the Father, Son, and Holy. We are the temple of the Godhead. Okay? Remember that. So you have the throne of righteous judgment, the throne of grace, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it. Jesus proved it. He never sinned. But he made a whip and whipped him. He threw him in the temple. He was angry. Yeah, isn't that great? <laughs> See, we can be angry and not sin. Back to says in the Word of God. Be angry, but sin not. But don't let the sun go down on your anger. And if you do repent, in the morning you'll have joy again. Or do it in the morning, you'll have a joyous day. This is about us. God gave me the revelation of it. This is about us. Seated in heavenly places. God makes his abode through these verses. He makes his abode in this place, this house built for him. Who created you? For his purpose. Huh? His purpose. Glorify. No. So he has a place to live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we not the kingdom of heaven? Yes. Because of why? Jesus. And we're seated in his throne with him. And the Father's throne who created a house for his son to live. And live out of. Now you understand what the scripture says that he will bless your comings and goings. It's not you. It's him. Because he gave him place to do what he wants. See that? Isn't that cool? Yeah. See, when we look at things spiritually, you will get a whole new revelation. Remember, Ephesians 1.17. Mind of Christ. I wish you all had the spirit of wisdom and revelation, which is the Godhead. Amen. And it's the mind of God. Called the mind of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ.